We then go back 300 years into the past, where this young lady said that she had been born in this kingdom, under the protection of the church and away from dangers and intruders, until, unfortunately, a plague simply destroyed everything, and many bodies were piled up, with more and more people being erased from history one after the other before they could be buried. This young woman desperately wanted to save everyone, but she turned out to be a dark witch, and she couldn't heal her relatives who had become memories, and could only summon their spirits to say goodbye. Until suddenly, someone came after her, saying that she was responsible for the disaster that had befallen the kingdom, and it was even the church she had previously protected that was after her. Of course, the young woman had done nothing wrong, and she was treated as if she were some kind of monster who had truly brought chaos and destruction to the place, but it was obvious that she was totally innocent in this sense. In her thoughts, she only said that it was she who had allowed them to say their final goodbyes to their families, and she was only doing a good deed. She ended up being thrown into the lake, but this young woman only wanted to save everyone, even if all she could do was help others say goodbye. It's even understandable why she turned into that creature, because this young lady hadn't really done anything wrong, and were back to the present, where it was commented that they could now leave that dark realm. However, if the portal hadn't appeared yet, it was a fact that the boss was still out there somewhere, and emerging from the depths again, it seemed that the creature had come back even more powerful than before. The only thing she knew to ask was why, perhaps in search of answers as to why she had been treated like that in the past, and now it had evolved into an even more powerful form. It eventually evolved to the next stage of a boss level, and with enormous rage, this creature told them not to even think that they would be able to escape after everything they had done. The protagonist dragon immediately used its wings to protect him from that attack, while the others tried to dodge the blows in any way they could, even attacking back that liquid which was even immune to physical damage. Miss Kai ended up telling the beautiful lady that it was all over now, but it was precisely the beautiful lady who said that it was she who should really apologize. Kneeling on the ground, she added that it was because she had insisted on entering that secret realm that they were now going through this, and if it hadn't been her fault, no one would be stuck there now, and the protagonist asked if at this point, the only thing she was going to do was really give up. She was the only one capable of carrying out magical attacks, but with her damage at that level, it would be difficult to achieve anything, and the old man also commented that the boss was immune to any kind of physical damage, and in that situation, they wouldn't even be able to protect themselves, asking the protagonist if he also happened to have magical attacks he could carry out. But while his dragon was defending the protagonist from the boss's consecutive attacks, he revealed that he wasn't actually capable of that, but his dragon could perform magical attacks. Despite being able to do this, their concern remained, as the difference in levels was simply too great, and the boss continued to attack, shouting, saying that it wasn't her, and the protagonist said that they didn't need to worry, as the attributes of a dragon couldn't even be compared to those of humans. The attacks continued one after the other, and with each attack there was a lament from the former young lady who had become that creature because of the dregs of society, and the protagonist gave the command for his dragon to finally attack, precisely with his fire-breathing attack. This attack was apparently strong enough to completely eliminate the creature, at least I hope so, and even the others were amazed at the power of a single creature, which in this case was the Proto's dragon. This time it really looked like the boss had been defeated, as its body began to break down and it simply turned into this form of light, finally disappearing and creating a portal so that they could return, as well as leaving behind a treasure chest too. Unfortunately, it wasn't revealed what level the protagonist's dragon was now at, and as they could now finally get out of there, they had better hurry, not least because it seemed that the smoke that was created after the boss was defeated was poisonous, so they had better get out of there as quickly as possible. The zombies from the village that they had previously defeated ended up appearing again, but now they had young Lu Fan's dragon to fight them with, and he immediately launched his fire-breathing attack at the creatures, roasting every single one of them. The beautiful lady only realized that her strength was simply absurd, as the zombies they had been struggling with before were easily decimated by this young woman. The prota then revealed that she was the black dragon, the young Xiao Yi, and she would deal with those minions as if they were nothing and she was only joking. And finally the protagonist said that they didn't need to be so tense since they had finished off the head of that kingdom, and after distributing the rewards, they could simply leave. Following the rules previously imposed, he would now be the first to choose the reward, and he asked them if they had any objections to this. 
which of course they didn't. He opened that treasure chest. When he opened that treasure chest, we first spotted a staff of holy light, which would be perfect for the beautiful young lady, a cloak that was also related to light, this morning ring that was also quite powerful, and this scroll, which guided occupations that weren't hidden to have a low probability of changing to their hidden profession, but in the area they were currently in or something related to it. Lu Fan would definitely choose this one, apparently already thinking of his aunt to improve her profession or something, but actually, from what I've seen here, the name of the scroll was the Class Change Scroll, so I believe that any class could be chosen when using it. In any case, the beautiful lady commented that he didn't have to leave because of them, and according to the rules, those things belonged to him. However, he commented that he didn't intend to be a knight there, not least because, after all, the equipment that appeared in the chest would suit the beautiful lady much better than it would him, and he really needed that class change scroll. The young woman went on to say that, if it hadn't been for him, everyone there would be completely wiped out by now, and handing him the ring, she asked him to at least accept it. Put it this way, then, the young man gladly accepted it with a huge smile on his face, which made his dragon extremely jealous of its owner, since he was much closer to the beautiful lady now than ever before, and it was said that they needed to go back now. Let's just say that, in this young lady's mind, she only wondered what kind of thing the protagonist was hiding, because he was a really difficult person to understand. Returning home, his aunt hugged him tightly, saying that what he had done was too dangerous, and just hearing his story made her tremble with fear, for he had encountered many dangers in those few days. Even the young man didn't understand his aunt's behavior, since she didn't want to let go of her beloved nephew, but the boy just wanted to take a shower, since he had been wearing the same clothes for days. Crying this time, while hugging her precious and beloved nephew, the beautiful maiden complained about him leaving without saying a word and only one letter and yet she didn't even sleep for several nights. She was afraid that it was all just a dream, and that when she woke up, he still wouldn't have come home, and apparently the crying was so much that she was even sobbing. He could only apologize after the enormous worry he had caused his aunt, because he had done it without her consent, and now she didn't have to worry anymore, because he wouldn't put her through that again. Again comforting this beautiful maiden, he asked her to stop crying now and, stroking the protagonist's dragon, she commented that, at first, this little girl ended up scaring the beautiful maiden a lot, because who would have thought that such a cute girl was simply a powerful dragon? The beautiful maiden asked if the little dragon was hungry, since she hadn't eaten properly in the last few days, which was obvious. The prota then said that that reward was specially selected for her when he managed to complete that dungeon earlier. He revealed that she could switch to a hidden profession, and she wouldn't have to stay in that establishment selling food anymore and could finally have a better life but she said that it was too valuable and she couldn't even accept something like that. Her proposal was for them to sell the scroll, because she said that he had left weapons and equipment to the young lady of the Qin family, and if they sold that scroll, she could buy back the two pieces of equipment he had left to the beautiful young lady, and she could do much better in that big test that was going to take place. As he showed his bank balance, he told his aunt not to worry about money, and he revealed that he had sold a lot of materials collected on this journey, so his classmate, who was the young woman from the Qin family, had also promised him a reward of 100,000 when they completed that dungeon. Now his aunt could trust him, and they wouldn't have to worry about money in the future, handing the scroll over to his aunt for her to use right away. As soon as she heard the young prota's request, we saw that it had been successfully consumed, and the boy asked if it had worked. The answer was yes, and she had obtained an occult occupation called Enchanted Chef, and he asked what was different about this occupation, as it was still related to her original profession. The maiden revealed that she now had the ability to create enchanted food, which allowed her to make food with various kinds of benefits that would increase people's attributes, and it seems that little Xiao Yi suddenly disappeared from there. Soon, we saw her sleeping after having eaten a lot of dumplings, and we cut to the house of the beautiful young lady from before, and her father asked about the protagonist, and if he was the one who had really saved everyone, as the young lady had said. She added that yes, it was because of her stubbornness that almost everyone ended up losing their lives, and Lu Fan really was very powerful. Each of them had hidden occupations, which in this case would be professions, but the difference between them was literally like that of a firefly compared to the moon. He asked if his daughter had told anyone about the dragon, 
and she said no, because she had made a promise to the protagonist when they returned, and she wouldn't mention that he owned a dragon outside the Qin family. Her father only praised her, saying that she had done well, and if this matter ended up leaking out, many, many people who covet the power of the dragon would not remain calm. Concerned about what her father had said, the young lady commented that Lu Fan had saved everyone, and wanted to know if her father didn't have any wrong thoughts about the proto-dragon, in the sense that he wasn't planning to do anything bad against them. But her father just laughed, asking if his daughter thought he was really that kind of person, but he wanted to know about her, and what she intended to do to thank young Lu Fan for saving her life. The answer was that, when she had called the boy to join her team, she had promised him a reward of 100,000, and her father said that, in that case, she was to take a letter or a purple card the next day and go and thank him in person. I don't know yet what that purple card or letter means, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Continuing, she asked if her father wouldn't go with her, as he was relatively curious about the young protagonist, and he commented that, if he could he would really like to meet this dragon tamer, but he had some commitments the next morning. Finally, we cut to the next morning, where a princess from the Taizi kingdom was going to the city of Jianhai to study, and this scum just isn't big enough, but it's toxic and disposable at the start of the morning, and you'll soon understand why. They were facing the establishment where the protagonist's aunt worked, and it wasn't long before we saw her getting ready to serve them. As soon as she opened the door, she was going to say that they would be closed that day, and she spotted these two commenting on something strange, and they were after someone there, as far as she could tell. Unfortunately, the manure from before ended up being very rude to the beautiful maiden, opening the door with such force that he even hurt the protagonist's aunt a little. That's just one of the reasons I say these fly skeletons don't even deserve to live, and this walking rattlesnake said it was after someone called Lu Fan, who then appeared. But let's just say that, on seeing the situation his aunt was in, he quickly showed concern for her, and then went to ask if everything was all right and what was going on, and the whole cover said that she had come there especially to see him. It was clear from the protagonist's face that he didn't like the presence of the two of them in his home at all, and he asked what they wanted with him. Finally, the rest of the wash introduced the princess of the disposable slags, and I don't need to mention the names of insects at this point, but basically it seems that they had an opportunity for the young protagonist. As soon as Lu Fang saw it, he realized that it was a dragon's egg, and if he happened to agree with them, that egg could end up being his. This queen of flies said that the conditions were quite simple for him to have that egg, and he was just to be her slave, and he would do exactly whatever she said, and he should never, ever disobey her. The rattlesnake went on to say that she had obtained that egg in the dragon's lair, and that it was the only dragon's egg in the world, but it seems that someone was a bit wrong about it being the only egg in the world. This snake continued talking nonsense one after the other, but when the protagonist looked at the statistics of that egg, he realized that it was an earth dragon, which was of even lower rank than a wyvern. The protagonist just said that the egg's attributes were relatively good, and the girl started to get confused about whether the protagonist really knew how important a dragon egg was for a dragon tamer. The proto's aunt showed a little concern, but he said he would deal with them, and again the useless girl said that, for a dragon tamer, if he didn't have a dragon, he was completely useless. As long as he became her servant, he could become the strongest profession in history, one that would never be forgotten, and she asked him if he wasn't excited about that. His answer was quite exciting, given the look on his face, or perhaps not, but either way he ended up refusing her offer, which left her in disbelief at what she had just heard. Having her request turned down was something this insufferable child couldn't handle, since she had always grown up with people spoiling her for being a princess. The protagonist said that if she had only gone there to deal with this matter, then she could just leave now, and he wasn't interested in that dragon egg she had, let alone in becoming her slave. This time, it was the zombie fly who took the lead, who began to defend the little leftover washout in the story, saying that the prota had disrespected her and all that nonsense from a disposable being who didn't recognize how toxic its owner was. Lu Fan replied that he shouldn't be so ridiculous, because the boy wasn't going to be anyone's servant or slave, and this time the despicable girl told the cockroach to teach the protagonist a lesson, and the moment his aunt stepped in to stop it, she ended up being beaten up in front of the protagonist, and that was certainly the worst mistake they could have made in their lives. While the protagonist was worried that his aunt had been attacked, the scum from before continued to spout unnecessary nonsense, and then set out to attack the protagonist this time while his back was turned, which in itself is an act of cowardice, 
in addition to the slap he gave his aunt. Before this scum could even touch the protagonist, this time it was Lu Fan's turn to act, and with his sword in the face of the wingless fly, the boy was completely enraged that the insect had hurt his family, and he was going to put an end to the scum of the story. As the scum retreated, the fly princess asked what her servant was doing, but the scum's animal instincts realized that there was something different about the protagonist. As soon as he referred to the fly princess, he slapped her too, just like his servant had done, saying that he didn't care if she happened to be a princess of a country or not. He just told her to shut up, take the garbage she had taken and just get out of their house. When the scum from before came towards the boy to try to attack him for hitting the princess, let's say with great ease, the young man disarmed this insect, and immediately after that he went to see if the princess of the flies was alright. Seeing her like that made me want to see her beaten up even more, and this time it was him who got the slap. Apparently, people from this manhua like to hit other people in the face. Clearly, she wasn't well, and ordered him to go and erase the protagonist of the story once and for all, and even if they could never find another dragon tamer, she wanted to see him seven feet under. But let's just say that the boy was prepared to see the slags try it, and the young protagonist dragon was finally awakening, because the beautiful young lady had made a call to his cell phone, although he hadn't answered. The beautiful lady was looking exactly for the protagonist's house, and suddenly she spotted an explosion happening right next to it, and out came the insect from before that was having a hard time dealing with the boy. The rattlesnake even had the audacity to tell the townspeople that they were just people from low society, and not to look at what was going on. I can't wait to see this princess suffer more and more, but for now I'll have to make do with just the slap she took. The insect finally recognized that the protagonist's attributes were on a much higher level than his own, and even the fly recognized that his servant was nothing more than a disposable being. This snake had one more card up its sleeve, and it began to invoke a type of dark magic, and from what the protagonist could tell, this magic was the complete opposite of the young beautiful lady from before, and she also had a hidden class. It was precisely the beautiful lady who appeared, asking what had happened, while the prota just wanted to know what she was doing there, and finally we see the scum from before become a totally different being, that is to say, partially different. As it turned out, these two weren't able to see properly, and we see the scum from before who now had half his body transformed into that of a horse, and now he was no longer human, but a monster, and the young beautiful lady took the lead so that she could try to help the young protagonist. However, when the creature sprinted towards them, the boy again took the lead so that it would stay away and protect itself, and also protect his aunt so that nothing would happen to her, and then dodged the attack of the scum from before. The creature's attack increased greatly after the fly had cast its magic, and it seemed that Lu Fan would have to use his dragon attacks to try to deal with this beast. The Dung was thinking that its monster minion really stood a chance against the protagonist, and let's just say that when the insect was about to say something, it was young Xiao Yi who stole the show. This chance would be perfect for the young protagonist. So the princess began to worry, as she realized that the real dragon was already in the boy's hands, and now it was his turn to act. The moment the slug tried to conjure its magic against the dragon, with just a roar, its ability was interrupted, and with enormous ease we see the strange being from before being totally trapped, and on top of that, thrown away like a piece of dung. Apparently, this throwaway was already on its last legs, and the princess realized that the dragon's power was on a whole new level, and that it wasn't just the egg her family had, but others as well. Taking the lead again, the protagonist asked if the fly princess hadn't said she was going to finish him off in order to relieve her anger. From the look of despair on that disposable girl's face, you could tell she was even collapsing from the trembling she felt after witnessing such power. It seems that she was just saying these things on automatic, typical of a spoiled girl who thinks the world revolves around her, and said that he was an enemy of the kingdom she had come from. The protagonist just laughed at what this washed-up leftover had said, and sending the insect she had so she could attack his family was the worst mistake she had ever made. As the proto-dragon prepared his final breath to finish her off, he said that even if she was a goddess, he would pay for what she had put his aunt through, and who suddenly arrived was precisely the beautiful lady's father in a griffin, asking him to stop his attack. The beautiful lady, realizing the danger her father was in, immediately shouted for him to be careful, because it was dangerous now, and when the dragon was about to hit the beautiful lady's father, the protagonist gave the command for her to stop, and so it was done as he asked. The moment the beautiful lady's father had successfully landed he said that there were too many presidents around, 
and asked young Lu Fan to turn his dragon back into its normal form, or even to hide it. In this gentleman's thoughts, he said that a real dragon was really different in terms of power compared to its subspecies, and he could feel the pressure just by being near it. Even the beautiful lady told the boy to do as she asked, and Lu Fang could believe them, until finally the young protagonist followed the advice the beautiful lady had mentioned, and we see Xiao Yi returning to his human form. Meanwhile, the beautiful lady's father told the princess that he had gone to the airport to welcome her, and he hadn't imagined that she would be in a place like this and that the Qin family driver would soon be there to take her to hospital. It was then said that the beautiful lady's father knew the princess, and the Proda's aunt commented that perhaps it would be possible for them to resolve this conflict, but he had a feeling that it wouldn't be possible. Then her father said that he understood the situation, and had caused problems for him as soon as they had met, so the protagonist really had a knack for attracting such things. He apologized, but it wasn't his fault, and the Proda's aunt wanted to know how the incident would be resolved, and it was revealed that both the fly and his minion had been sent to hospital, and they would still need to give an explanation to the fly's family anyway. It seems that the fly's family was really influential and had a lot of power, and the boy's aunt was afraid that her nephew might face some kind of punishment, even if the debilitated fly was completely wrong in her actions. Even if she had that much power in her hands, the proto revealed that she would never compromise her dignity just for the sake of a dragon's egg, and the boy needn't have worried, because it seemed that the beautiful lady's father had a way of keeping him safe. But he wouldn't be able to do it alone, so there was a condition that had to be met by the protagonist, and he wanted to know what that condition was. The condition was that he had to achieve the title of champion of the southern province in the big exam, and he would do his best to delay the princess until the protagonist had finally finished the exam. The beautiful lady then commented that this wouldn't be easy, as there were countless students who were great coming directly from the southern province. However, if the protagonist were to overcome them and become the champion, the beautiful lady's father said he would help him, and, put it this way, the prota ended up accepting the condition the old man had set. In the hospital itself, where the rattlesnake from before was, we see it making a phone call to someone complaining about the protagonist, and from this image alone we can see that it didn't want to see the good in him, and added that it wouldn't rest until it saw him nine feet under. The next day, before the big exam started, we saw several people who stood out among the students, and the students saw the protagonist, and let's just say that the comments were not so pleasant. They even said that the top student in the class had simply become garbage, and no school would want him, and then asked why he was taking part in the exam itself. The only thing on the boy's mind was that he was too busy at the moment to deal with the insect's sarcastic and unnecessary comments, and finally we see the old man from before appearing to ask the students to be quiet, as the opening of the big exam was finally about to begin. If you liked it and want to know what happens next, don't forget to leave your like so you can support my work. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best. A big hug and see you next time.